Benvingudes, benvinguts a School at Change. Welcome. Welcome. It's a great pleasure for me to be connected with you today. My name is Mariona Sillier, co-founder and co-director of Supertech, a digital social innovation lab in an old chocolate factory from the 1920s with an interdisciplinary team composed mainly by women that promotes programs and projects in the frontiers of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Projects like Steampunk, Maker Fair, Barcelona, and Girona, Mesh, amongst others. I will, today, I have a great pleasure to introduce the session of why it's team and to moderate a discussion between extraordinary women like Pini Hernandez Leo, Digna Causa, Cora Regi, and Federica Peduini. Why it's team? An integral gaze over reality posed by STEAM through a project-based learning and problem resolution learning connects the classroom with the real world and it promotes at the same time independent learning and collaborative learning because the learners see how their ideas are carried out in a combination of challenge, commitment, action, collaboration, passion and intense work. We are at the beginning of this fourth industrial revolution, an educator's face of the challenge of preparing a whole generation of students for many professions that still do not exist. Ever since the term STEM was created, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in 2001, there has been an increasing interest in this learning focus to prepare students better to the challenges of life and the professions of tomorrow. What happens if the integral learning experience demands observing and asking significant questions about the world, documenting your results, and to create something that complies with a real need and develops talents and interests that are unique and intrinsic to each student. How to promote STEAM with a gender vision? What happens if we promote our learning experiences, integrated learning experiences based on observation, research, and experience? And how will these spaces be if they combine talent and unique interests from each student, combining them for projects of collaboration? And how to enrich our strategies to include collaborative and innovative uh, outlooks for each student? So we have Davinia. Professor of the Department of Technology. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm going to share my screen. I love participating in this discussion about such an important topic, like the one that has been proposed. To start, I'd like to present what we are working on in a project that is to starting now, and it gives great opportunities for participation for the interests of educators and people who are working in this field. The project that I want to share with you is an Erasmus class project, it's a European project. And we want to see how we can improve learning with AI sensors and the Internet of Things for students answering your question, can make observations about real things, things that they find and the welfare of plants and their own welfare, things that turn around environmental awareness. Look, I don't know what happened. I can't load the following slide. Okay, let me, let me go to the previous one. Okay, this is something I presented in my research group when I had the pleasure to lead. It's a learning education science group. We are in the campus of Poblano in Barcelona at the Pompeu Fabra University. We carry out many projects, interdisciplinary projects with participation in technologies with regards to what can create new learning experiences and also DTIPs. With regards to STEAM, I'd like to mention some of the projects we are working on. Some projects are related to inclusion issues, the specific uses of technology that can favor inclusion in STEAM areas, methodological projects with specific methodologies, like a design-based methodology 
classroom creation based on technologies and something that's related to the critical use of technologies. For example, when the social net networks are used. This is what you find in this slide. The MEGAS program, how to use the social media, knowing the, how they work from the point of view of technology. The latest project that we have in this slide, and that's the one that's related best to STEAM, how to learn learning spaces and to complement them with elements that allow students to ask themselves questions, to be involved in research processes in which they themselves can actually get involved in collecting data and interpreting them. With regards to this project, we have the participation of educators with regards to the design of learning activities that they themselves can carry out with the technological element that we suggest or the clues, the methodological clues that we suggest. We have platforms or teaching communities, teacher communities like the projects that promote technologies of thinking beyond design, etc. But as I've said, basically, right now, we're starting with the learning and teaching space projects with smart devices, sensors. Here you are actually seeing the bowels of the device that we introduce. Green spaces, green spy components. And with these sensors, it will be possible through a prototype to collect this type of data. We were very much interested in seeing what we can do with this type of data based on research, which could be interesting for different educational levels. And we're working with teachers at the level of workshops in different centers, and also at the level of high school master's degrees, in which what we try to do is how this type of data can be useful to think about learning activities that allow people to think about plant welfare elements, issues related to humidity, light, etc., and how this could have an impact on the students themselves and the teachers. And in addition to, to it all, activities that are related to being, about being aware about factors that could affect the environmental issues in the classroom, etc., like humidity, temperature, noise, and light. And to work on these type of issues, we also work with research-based methodologies. Here we have an example, a starting example. It's a very generic example with multiple professors, future professors with many very different possibilities. And we have, for example, imaginative outcome. In this slide, what we say is that you can have plans in the classroom that we could think about other spaces in which students actually measure different parameters with sensors. With that, they generate their own conclusions about the plants and about the climate in that space. This data can be analyzed from very many different points of view, chemical, physical, in a well-integrated way as well. And here we have some elements that can be observed through the sensors. And also we look for other elements that could allow us to understand how technology can help us have observation diaries about aspects that cannot that, that are not collected by the sensor so that the students can actually observe the status of the plant and how they are in order to analyze that with the data collected by the sensors the measurements by the sensors and also the emotional evolution that could stem from this type of activity. So we believe that this type of elements could bring us to learning activities 
and it could actually cover these two levels, the environmental level, the level of awareness of a person. And with the teachers, we're trying to see what type of units we can have in order to take advantage of the novelty that this type of technologies bring forth. And we're co-designing with them how these data can be used for them to be very useful in learning activities. With the professors, we're doing many drawings to see what are the common aspects underlying all of them. And we have already a first panel of data, a first dashboard, data dashboard, which can be considered by the teacher to be, for example, to be used as a street light to know the re issues related to the plants and to people. And the sense can be used based on the plants that are being observed. And the prototype we have and the indicators are based on the senses. And here we have a, a registry of the observations that student can do in order to cross the uh, data collected and the measurements collected by the sensors. And we also have a small prototype of a plant chatbot that can actually allow you to talk to the plant in order somehow to have an answer, to be able to understand the welfare of the plants. Anybody interested in receiving information about this first phase of the project? Once we have built up all of the prototypes, now we're working on training materials. It would be very interesting to keep on seeing the possibilities given by the design of activities and how these data dashboards have to be. And we'll start training in December. So if there is any interest, you can just fill up the form that we include in this slide, where you can point out your interest in other types of projects in the research team. Thank you. And this is my contact data. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. Lavinia, it's fascinating to see how, you know, a plant may react in the chatbot. I mean, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please send them. And we will actually have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Now, Digna Koza will have the floor. I'm going to speak now in Catalonian. She studied physics. She has a PhD in science education. She's a professor at the Math and Experimental Sciences Department, and she's involved in the training of future primary and secondary professors. As a researcher, she has worked in different projects to improve the level of science teaching at a national and European level. She has published many articles that have had a high impact, and she reviewed, she's a reviewer in international magazines and journals. Thank you for being with us, Digna. You have the floor. The Digna's mic is off. Could you tell her she should turn it on, please? I was saying that good afternoon and thank you. I could see the screen. Good afternoon, everybody. Those of you who are online and also professors who are on the other side of the screen. We are very happy that in July, this hot weather, we're still here all together to share things. Let me share my screen to see if it works. I've tried to answer to the question, why steep? It's a very difficult question. The one asked by Mariona, she always puts us in difficult situations, in dust rate, and we were wondering why. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether I have to pronounce this in English, steam, or in Spanish, steam. Okay, why steam? Okay, what I wanted to share with you is that I believe it's a very important question. Maybe the most important question we have asked so far. Okay, we have actually concentrated on how we do it, what we do. But I think it's also very important sometimes to go a bit behind and why do we do it? I wonder why do we do it? 
And in order to define the goal, we need to identify the problem we have at Steam. Oftentimes, we talk about a problem that Mariona started like that. The professions that we do not know how they will be, and we will be, in, be needing more professionals. But there are significant risks from a political level. These professional, higher quality idea. But uh, what interests me the most is the lack of diversity. We need other professionals. You know, uh, currently, there is a significant gender bias, ethnic bias, and socioeconomic bias. But we also tend to ignore the cognitive diversity, competency or skills or expertise diversity. To have people devoting themselves to a field, skills that are very different between each other, because the problems that we will have to face, all of the SDG problems are problems that will not be easily solved with cognitive profiles and similar ways of doing things that have actually placed us into the problem. Just de sentir, d'actuar. I a més a més, i potser més important encara, a nivell de ciutadania, perquè al final eh, necessitem professionals... In terms of cities, we need external professionals. But, you know, that should not be a minority. In terms of citizenship, it's important to have citizens with competencies, with literacy, scientific and technological literacy, because currently, for example, and this pandemic has shown so, we see every day steam positioning that are extreme. We have some anti-steam, anti-scientific positions, people who have a low uh, self-esteem with regards to steam or who have not been successful, who have been felt rejected, or maybe they believe this is a field in which they would never be able to participate. And on the other hand, we have another extreme. People who are highly motivated, excessively positive, technology will solve it all, science is good by nature, and that's another extreme of the continuum, because technology can also be a problem. I mean, technology can help us, but by itself it will do nothing. So we need some ethical guidance, some criteria to follow. So I think it's very important to define and reach an agreement by consensus about what is this competency or this literacy in STEAM for everybody that will allow most people to reach the STEAM professional world. And it should guarantee above all that most citizens have a positioning that's critical, but a positive one. It should be positive and critical at the same time. And that's not easy to strike. We have tried to define this STEAM competency, which is a proposal, and it's the one that we apply to our professors. We say that to educate or to create a STEAM literacy is the one that should help us to identify, apply, or reflect about the ways of being, thinking, and speaking. And, and I would add to feel and sense about science, engineering, and mathematics in a more or less integrated way. Integration is important between this and the other. What's important is that whether it's more or less integrated, when we're educating in STEAM, we are sharing, we are making our students, we're turning them into part, our students or our, our citizens, in the ways of making, thinking, talking about and feeling of STEAM. And we do so in order to understand, decide and act in front of complex problems and also to build up creative solutions and innovative solutions. People tend to forget that STEAM is about building up, about making, but sometimes it's about building up a protocol to, or about understanding the problem. And that's why it's important that we also share that. And how do we do it? Well, with, personal synergies and the right technology. Not only in terms of it being fairer that more people do it, but because it creates more quality that more people can actually actually contribute to have a gender perspective in science, for example. And therefore, using these synergies and the right technologies, not only what exists, but also what's good, whenever it is good, in a critical, reflexible, reflexive and value-based way. And that's crucial. Let me give you a specific example. During the first versions of STEAM classrooms we had in our country, 
you could not have a C platform if you, if you didn't have a 3D printer. But why do we need this 3D print, printer? Nobody actually ever thought about that, uh, or whether we could actually print out in different ways, or whether we truly needed to print out what we wanted. So values are crucial as well. What do we do it for? Well, what do we do and how do we do it? important to bear in mind the goal, the purpose. And what do we do to, to us? It's very important the practices about, with and about STEAM, different ways of looking at science from mathematics. It's the result. It's not important not to focus on the knowledge, the scientific or mathematical knowledge we have generated, but rather in the way we have generated this knowledge. Because by understanding this form and how science is science, we can respect the scientific results and the role they play. And that doesn't mean anybody. It doesn't mean it's relative. Maybe now we do not know everything, as has happened with the pandemic, for example. But that doesn't mean we do not know enough or that what we're doing has no value. The importance in these practices, in these ways of doing, these ways of approaching problems, Different disciplines have different ways of approaching problems. A social problem from a historical gaze is seen in a way, and from a mathematical or statistical gaze, or from a psychological gaze or a scientific gaze, is a different way of looking at things. And also the key ideas, the key knowledge we have, not to focus on the detail, but on what's essential and how to go about it. And here I have a critical position with regard to some of the things that we start embarking on, for example, the STEAM proposals must be contextualized and they must have relevance. Why? Because if we want to attract these diverse students, if what we do not, if what we do is not contextualized in their world and their reality, and it's not relevant for themselves, for society and for the world, then it's not going to be attractive. And this is much more important than the problematization and the challenge. The problematization is in important, but beforehand we have to analyze the relevance. And why do I say that? Because sometimes those of us who love science and technology, we get really um, engaged and we get really excited by a challenge and say, okay, let's do this, let's do how, how do we do this? And this alienates some profiles, especially some women. Now, the idea that STEAM with an A, we have communicated that you cannot have STEAM with an A. You need to introduce the A, the way how we understand it, the humanities. And it, it is a privileged strategy, but it's the only one. Sometimes, okay, you can do STEAM projects well. Sometimes it's the right methodology, but not the only one. In fact, any methodology, any strategy that practice is that focus that's centered in the practice of this discipline the way of doing it that is carried out in a in a, in a reflexive communicate communitarian community-based way and with values it, it is useful we have a way of doing that has existed for many years before the steam movement and yet it's very interesting and we can reconquer them like for example case studies etc Contr scientific controversies, exactly, king frame making. So I think we tend to forget that values and the reflective part are forgotten. And the emotional part, the emotional part is the one I want to share with you right now, because I believe that we have really ignored it. When we talk about the emotional part in STEAM, we have always talked about motivation and full stop. It's almost like uh, an intrinsic interest and motivation, okay? Uh, you know, they will get excited just like I do and full stop and it will work without any further ado, and, but that doesn't work like that. In fact, we have carried out many, many research studies uh, internationally. A lot has been done about the positioning of STEM with regards to the topics, people, the agents, and the scientific technological type of activities. Uh, people say, oh, no, I am a humanities person, or I am a science person, or I am very bad at science, or I'm very bad at mathematics. And people position themselves from a negative perspective, sometimes based on insecurity or lack of empowerment. Now, this positioning, the STEM for You project, led here in Barcelona, by Barcelona, but it agglutinated many people around the world, 
Well, it showed that it is dependent on many variables, many psychological variables, not cognitive ones, like interest, like identity aspirations, capacity, and the perception of your capacity. And, you know, we measured, that, you know, the element that measures capacities are grades. And that interest, which is the one that we have st studied the most, oftentimes we think, well, this person is not interested by science. She's not interested in science. In fact, interest is very much mediated by many other things, specifically by identity, aspirations, capacity, and the perception of capacity. And if anything could be interesting. When you say that something doesn't interest you, you are hiding that I do not believe I'm able to, I'm not up to, I cannot do it well. Or it's something that's totally out of me, it's not for somebody like me. And that's why I'm not interested. Or it's something that I will never be able to work on, and therefore I'm not interested. And then we realize that these are the variables. These identity aspirations and self-efficacy, which are also affected by other sociocultural factors, which are composed very early before the age of 10, they are having a big impact. And above all, they are affected or conditioned, or they depend a lot on the aspirations, on the perception of capacity and the identity projected by your points of reference, normally teachers and parents. So we have studied exactly what is this STEM positioning in amongst our students in the YOMO context, which is also an activity that we carry out, which is an enormous Congress with the students beforehand, the sample was very large. And we made these students answer a very long questionnaire about their variables, their interests, their motivation, etc., about STEM and non-STEM fields. And we realized that in Catalonia, we have two positioning, like everyone, like everybody else, of extremes. On the one hand, uh, 23% of people, of young people, who are fully convinced that they are for them. And when they talk about STEM, they talk about engineering or technology. And more, normally it's boys, or they are doing a vocational training in engineering. And a 16% of the total of women who are convinced that STEM is for them, and for them, STEM means sciences and health. And this is what appears in the literature, and Catalonia is not different. And we have another totally extreme positioning of students with a low, with low grades, very little external recognition, very little self-efficacy. And normally these are the two groups. These are groups that are statistically significant in terms of the variables. And this is, these are people who have difficulty. And this questionnaire was for people aged between 12 and 16. And these are students that have great difficulties and they have a very complex school situation, not only with regards to STEM, but with regards to all of the areas. And then in the middle, and this is very interesting, we have this C3 group. We found the most numerous group of them all. It's a group that between the age of 12 and 16, they are students, both boys and girls, who are interested. And they're a moderate, and self-efficacy, they're sufficiently interested. It's not the most or the least. And it's not what they do best, but they do not believe that they're especially bad at it. They also have a moderate capacity. They take good grades in these areas. But surprisingly, they have very little external recognition. In other words, when we ask them, do you believe that your teachers believe that you're good enough in the scientific and technological area? biology, mathematics, etc. Maybe some of them think they're not. And when we ask them about your parents, do you do they believe you're good enough to do a STEM career? They say no. And their aspirations end up being in areas related to sports, the arts, a little bit of humanities. I think it's very interesting, the result of this study, because look at the enormous leeway we have for those students who are the most numerous of them all to go up or look down or to stay in the center. They may end up doing whatever they want to do because all professional options are legitimate, but they should not do it for the wrong reasons. I need to think that they're not good enough, that they do not have enough capacity for STEM, that STEM 
is something difficult for very clever people and it's not for them. And that brought us a little bit to rethinking, to thinking what's the type of STEM education we need, not in terms of how to make students develop more their STEM competencies, which is also something we want to do, so that they do not feel alienated from STEM, so that they do not go to one of these extremes, which are not what they want. And our proposal, which is not new, but it is a more human, humanistic and more humanized STEM education. What do we mean by that? That's, that's when you introduce the A. No, with or without the A. Even when we only do science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, to be more humanistic and more humanized. And what does that mean? It has to be done with didactic quality. The five wonderful, the five wonderful ones, contextualization, relevance, authenticity, dialogical interaction, and uh, regulatory and, and, tr and, 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 and training of evaluation or assessment. We need to solve problems that are relevant for us with an intersectional and gender perspective. You can't say, oh, you need STEM with gender perspective. No, we should do gender perspective-based STEM. The idea of choosing themes that are based on stereotypical cliches, using you know, the things that are not related by a binary system, using positive strategies with, with regards to the gender, using a non-sexist management and language, historical visibilization, current visibilization, and other knowledges, other knowledges that groups of women have or indigenous communities have, which is also very interesting. And above all, with values. Values of sustainability, social justice, and inclusion. I had something else, but I see that my time is up because I have been told I just had 15 minutes. I, I'm going to stop here because I will actually send you this presentation. This is my last slide. What we need is a new culture for the STEM classroom. This is a classroom that does not project a culture of excellence. STEM is for the super clever ones, super intelligent, super brainy students, or a culture of just fun. The STEM is just for fun, no. We need to promote proactively a culture of participation. STEM is an area in which we, you can't afford not participating because it's part of your life because you have to make decisions as to whether you will be vaccinated or not as to whether you will be acting in favor of climate change or not, whether and that will make you more or less happy. You know, it's the planet's survival, your own care and the care for the planet. And this is for people like you. STEM need people like you as well. And STEM, the future of STEM cannot be without you. So STEM is useful for people like you. STEM need people like you as well, and the future of STEM cannot be without you. And with these three pillars, we will have greater possibilities to have a STEM that will solve the problems we have identified at the beginning, which are not only to have less professionals that are devoted to it, but also to achieve that more people, more citizens will feel attracted by this or will feel that it talks to them. And I'm going to stop here because I think I have used too much time. I'm so excited by this topic. I could be speaking here till midnight. No, 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 no problem. Spectacular. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have touched upon so many topics. Now you have actually covered so many fronts that I'm sure many, many questions will be actually asked during the Q&A session. The next speaker is Coral Regi. Coral has been the director and professor of the Virulai School since 1998. She's also the president of the Catalonian Education Administration's European Forum, a member of the Council of State of the FEAE. You have the floor. Well, thank you, Mariona, and thank you all. I'm having such a good time, and I believe that this truly helps us to have this complementary vision. I'm going to try and answer a question from my vision, from a school master's case, from the a school management point of view, as to why, when a school gets into a transformation process, it actually, that implies a STEM vision. 
in a transformation process. Clearly, and I believe that all of us present here and people listening to us are fully convinced that we're going through a radical transformation phase and with a situation in which we have thought about the need to have an educational transformation because we're in a new context for uh, for work or job stability reasons in the past which was the old paradigm now we find a new way i mean to teach people to be adaptable and flexible is not something that educational marketing is the reality that we can't actually ignore and we also need to educate people as Yuval Noah Harari says in his 21 lessons for the 21st century, so that people expand their personal knowledge. And based on that, so that they constantly learn and they reinvent themselves one, I mean, he talks about recreating, to recreate yourself constantly. If this is the way we need to teach our boys and girls, we as a school, we need to have, we need to change because the current educational system based on the experience of Tina Koza, as she has said, the school itself talks about, well, it, it actually outs, it actually gets many, many people out of the system. And as we have seen today, that implies an enormous rate of youth unemployment. Clearly, the educational system needs to be changed, and we have that challenge ahead. We need to rethink education. And here, I believe that we need to face this as one of the most urgent social challenges we have. We need to think about a way of education of educating that should be child-centered. When we talk about placing the child at the center, that means that the school should respond to what needs, what the child needs to grow up as become an adult, learn during the whole life. People need to have this flexibility and this resilience, which Oftentimes, we mention theoretically, but when we find ourselves in a situation like the current pandemic, I have thought very often the alarming rates of mental disorders amongst young. I mean, we need to actually educate with this premise that we have on paper to work to educate young people implies to work out their flexibility and resistance. We were not ready, but we as people, what we can't afford doing is not facing our educating task, our educational task. I'm going to talk very briefly about educating people based on three values. Three values that are intertwined with what Digna has said beforehand. First, self people who should actually overcome their limits. The life of young people who define a challenge and who want to surmount and overcome problems. And this implies constructing a prototype with all of its varieties. And this is a crucial tool to work on your self-esteem. Another value is perseverance. The need to work with the learning based on past mistakes. Digna talked about the fact that STEM classes need to have many thinking factors or reflection factors when you are programming when you're doing a prototype, when you're doing anything, there should be this thinking process. This has not come out well. For example, Digna's plans, this has not had a good outcome. Let's think why not. 
And here, the alternative is to go beyond the mistake, to overcome the mistake and to start again. And that implies a power and a capacity for personal learning and personal growth that's crucial. And STEM and STEAM actually allow for this. And the third value is creativity. Nowadays, a lot of people talk about maximum, maxima. They say, like here there's a determining element, technology. S the STEAMs we need to work are the technologies that come from uh, the human mind. Creativity, people who create, who face a question and they look for the best solution. They do not accept just the first answer. Each educator plays a role in provoking this, and this is crucial. Therefore, basically, we have to work with these three axes. Self-overcoming, perseverance, and creativity. The three values that are crucial for people. And they can be worked out clearly through STEAM. We have an example of a festival we actually do uh, you know the, the, the we, we do every year the european week on mistakes to include mistakes as an element in our way of working and steam has as i've said beforehand is a great opportunity and after that there is another element that steam also brings forth oftentimes we talk about the need to learn to have learning strategies there are a number of competencies related to STEAM, which are the competencies of observation, reasoning, experimentation, experimentation, which are sometimes they allow you to realize that many other things you learn do not come from Google, but they come from your own experimentation and your own observation. And these are competencies that are crucial for a life or learning. And here, the other element I believe is crucial is the need to include values, competencies to keep on learning. And here we have a few examples. Cross-sectional competencies, and of course, based on the design of anything. But there should be ways of learning that are fully interrelated and contextualized with the world. Beforehand, you have all talked about the mentality or the mindset of including the context, how to learn. And here, I believe there is food for thought. Let me mention during the last minute I've left a clear example of the paradigm change from know it all to learn it all. These learn it all for the student, I mean, especially in uh, this percentage band, 37% that Lavinia said, which implies they have the way to learn. I was a student in, a new, in an assessment activity, and she is a good learner. And she said, the good learner, the good student says what he or she is told. The good learner knows what he or she has to do, because that will allow him or her to learn. And that actually promotes creativity. And Philippe Perrineau said, this is what culture should be doing, to be able to act effectively in different specific situations, moving and combining real time and a pertinent way, in a, in a pertinent way, intellectual and emotional resource. And this is what Lavinia said, including an emotional education. It's not that this is not related to STEAM, but somehow STEAM is approached as a way of doing it in a totally different manner. Sorry, my, phone, my mobile phone is ringing. Sometimes, as you can see, current devices can be, can interrupt us. And here, there is a key element. The element that traditional schools do the worst a school that met the natural interest of students. The school needs people who take into account different ways of learning, like this tree. Students and their interest in learning. 
And this means that it should be a school in which we think about the capacity of asking good questions. Sometimes it makes us feel fearful. Our AI. Clearly, there are many things that, you know, all of the things that a robot can do, a robot will do it. But there's a very wide range of key characteristics that are just human. In STEAM, there is a capacity for students to learn how to move in an environment that, based on the questions that they ask, based on the elements and the curiosity they think, a good teacher is the one that's able to play this role in the classroom to help students develop their curiosity. And here technology is present. And we have to think it think about technology as something that's absolutely ordinary, nothing extraordinary. And this is part of the student's way of doing. You know, positions, extreme positions that are extreme with the pandemic has been totally overcome because we realize that common sense and to be able to use our criterion to educate, it is much better than just teaching people as if it were a production machine. And the approaches for Education 2030 is clear. This is not only a schooling crisis, it's a learning crisis. In this change we have, the inclusion of STEAM is a crucial element that helps us promote the type of education we want and we need. Therefore, after that, I'm sure that during the Q&A, there will be many questions asked about this, and I will be delighted to participate in it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Coral, for a brilliant and beautiful presentation with so much food for thought for the Q&A after the presentations. Please do not forget that if you want to ask questions, do use the chat box. Now I have the great pleasure to introduce Federica Beduin. Federica is a physicist and a PhD in experimental quantum physics. She has been part of the ICFO team since 2015, and currently she's coordinating citizen science experiments like big, the Big Belt Test and Night Up and uh, the dissemination activities addressed to the public at large and to schools like the Young Photonic Congress. So you have the floor, Federica. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for inviting me to come here because with so many education experts, I'm just a poor scientist. I am on the STEM side and let's try, sometimes we try to do things, interesting proposals for the students. I have made a good note of all of the things that I've said. The point is to learn it all. And I am a scientist. And I love it. As my, my colleagues have said, science covers many fronts. And from here, we make our contribution. So let me start by contextualizing, and then I'll talk about a specific project to see it within the context of STEM. I mean, we have not tried all the dynamics, and we use it very much in this field. The point is to discover new themes by collaborating with others. But as I've said, we talk about Dombis because it is a bit different from the others. I'm at ICFO, which is the Institute of Photonic Sciences in Castel de Fel, close to Barcelona. And we are at the border, at the boundary of knowledge. The Photonics, Photonic Science Institute, we see light photons as a tool to study the transfer of knowledge. 
to study not only light in itself, but also other things. Materials like graphite and many others. Light is also a very good element to work on very small things at the boundary between biology and technology. And light is also very good for quantum physics. Science is wonderful in itself for those who like it, but it's also very useful. And we do fundamental science just to increase our knowledge. And we also try to find solutions to global problems in fields in which the, pro the photon can actually be very useful. We work especially in the field of health, information and cyber security, energy and the natural environment. And let's say that the idea, both at the department in which I work, since 2015, oh, but beforehand, I wanted to say that given that we also talk about diversity, here we have a clear diversity, but we also have people who research different topics, they train, and so we're diverse in terms of the research topics, the training, and the place you come from. And here we have all of the letters of STEM, people who do fundamental science like chemistry, physics, and biology. And we have people in the field of technology, all sorts of engineers, and also mathematics. So we have just about a little bit of everything. And also a mixture of countries of origin. I'm an Italian person, even though I speak Catalan. But if you look at the picture on the left-hand side of the slide, most of them come from outside, from abroad. They are not Catalonian. And it's beautiful because even though there are many, many Italians, there are more than 60 nationalities represented. It's a big mixture. And as Corral has said, this is very useful. And to have this mixture of people promotes creativity. We solve problems that nobody has been able to solve beforehand. Or maybe they have tried and they have not been successful. And creativity to us is a stepping stone. It's really crucial. So with this mixtures, we also have different mixtures of knowledge and expertise to reach our goal. For example, we carry out different activities. We work with schools and we want to actually encourage scientific goals, scientific, the scientific desire. But as you have said, Mariona, we as an institution, we work with schools for students and for professors, but also for the public at large because our idea is to disseminate, not only to explain science to young people, preparing them for the future, but we believe that everybody should have some interest in science because science is everywhere and it surrounds us. Every day we use technologies and to know how it works, to know which possibilities they give us is crucial to live, to live as citizens at all ages, from an early age, all the way to a to senior citizens. There are certain anti-scientific ideas. But science is here and we use it. And we need to know how things happen. For example, with regards to a photonic activity, we are experts in that field, but that's the idea. We should be able to carry out many different activities to reach the maximum widest public possible. And today I'm going to talk about a specific project that we have. ICFO decides game. I mean, it, it, it works very well if you have many pets that work in parallel, four or five people. And you give them a question, knowing that in principle, Knowing that photonics benef 
benefit society in many different ways, how would you distribute the funds between the different research fields in Plutonic? It's a question that people tend to think about, but we believe that it's an interesting question. Why? Because first of all, as we have said, science is not only a lab, it's not only about a lab, but there are many, many di dynamics in life. And people who do science, they also participate in other aspects of life. But, you know, there are questions that need to be answered, like this one. So the idea is to imagine a person, for example, belonging to a committee like in the EU, and to provide information for them to make a decision about how to distribute the funds between the different plutonic research fronts. And people who carry out this activity normally, they have no clue about this. So there are different phases. And in each phase, we call it a car. Within the group, you have different aspects. And you are provided with some information. And then we start the study. For example, in a group of five people, I have my three cards. And there are four additional cards on my group pairs, hands. And we have more or less the same information in a much more dynamic way. And they themselves receive the information from their group partners. And thus, the content changes. We start with photonics in daily life, like personal stories, like, for example, I had I had I had to wear eyeglasses, and thanks to a laser, which is a photonic technique, I have stopped using eyeglasses. And if the internet is as fast as it is, why is there fiber optics? Why is there optic fiber? So this is information about photonics in daily life. And this is a snapshot of what photonics is nowadays. The next card tells you about the photonics for the future, the research projects at ICFO, to give us an idea of where this will take us all to and what we could do with photonics and how it could help us in different fields, especially in the field of energy. And then we go to the thinking card open problems about science and society. Scientists are people who live in society, and the scientific community is a community made up of people. And some of these things would be interesting, well, to give us an idea of how science should go. And this card gives us a context, but it always they always end up with an open question for which there is no answer. Let me give you an example. Talking about the pandemic context, given that they didn't have a clue as to how all of this worked, the scientist published everything he discovered in real time without actually making some filtering to discover or to, to, to separate what's false and what's true, and without validating a result. So these are the type of open questions we have. And then we have the yellow card, the meet the expert card, talk to an expert. And if they talk to us, they have a chance to talk to one of us about a live, the project, etc. And at the end, clearly, they have to make a decision, which is the purple car. Let's say that the idea here is that, well, it's a very interesting one, because it promotes critical thinking, because it positions you, 
based on the information and you need collaboration because we give him a clue to make a decision that finally should be unanimous in a respectful way. And it is also multidisciplinary because it is about science, but we also talk about the dynamics around science. It's a very flexible type of dynamics. And it depends on whether all students are in the same classroom or each one at home. Whether we did it on our own or with other people or just by connecting. In other words, it's very dynamic and very adaptable to the needs of the group you're working with. So this is a design, for example, this is a, a, something we did at the CCCP. It can be done in different contexts. And normally, the activity can be done in person. And this allows us, you know, with video conferencing, you can reach many more people. This we could do in the past. And we have done things in Catalonia that maybe we, we would have not done if we didn't have this possibility because we're located in Castel de Fels. Students feel they are the protagonists, the main characters, and they interrelate with us, the scientific part. And they can ask not only about science, for example, we have received many other questions. The typical one, how much do you make every month? How much do you earn? And of course, this is the entry gate to asking many more things. And well, this is, we have included some technical things too, especially starting on the third grade of high school. And it has been very positive. And we are also developing a project, which is called Playing Time, in which we introduce topics. We wanted to do it to introduce photonic, but we also have a version about climate change and also quantum technologies. And I think I've said everything I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Federica. Oh, spectacular, fascinating, my goodness. I loved your presentation. So now we will be with you, Coral and Digna. Lavinia had to leave, unfortunately. So we will have to link up with her later. I have really enjoyed and loved all of the things you have said, spectacular. All of the things you have talked about, self-censorship in society, you know, groups of people who cannot devote themselves to science because they consider it overly complex, the importance of error. Many different things you have mentioned that, you know, the emotional infrastructure that we have to give to society so that there is inclusion and diversity in uh, the world of STEM and technology, because if not, we will have a, a world that's going to be overly aggressive. So we do need this oxytocin. That gives us a friendlier vision of the world. You know, Lynn Margulis theories in the 60s is one of my personal muses. And then a sentence that came to my mind constantly was listening to you, science and everyday life should not be separated. Science and everyday life cannot be separated. And that's what Rosalind Franklin said. She was the person who with some of her lab assistants found the DNA helix. So I'd like to, after this summary, I'd like to talk now about something that really worries me. 
And given that we're all women in this panel, is gender. What can we do? You know, attendance, the audience listening to us. What are you doing? I mean, it should not. We should not design on a gender basis. But what can we do? We could start with Digna and then Corral and Federica. So I'd like to know your vision. I'd like to know your opinion. Okay. Currently, there is much more awareness and sensitivity about this topic. All society in all fields have a different type of awareness and sensitivity, not only in terms of gender, but also in terms of the LGTBI community. There is greater awareness, greater sensitivity. And to place people's care at the, at the center, the care for the planet at the center, that helps us. You know, it's the most feminist thing to do in the world. But at school or at STEM, what can we do specifically? I believe the first thing we need to do is to understand what the problem is all about, because sometimes we tend to have a very naive positioning. Like a lot of professors tell me, what do they tell me at high school? But what are you talking to me about to, to, to introduce a gender perspective? You know, girls are the ones who have the greatest marks. My women students are the ones who have the best outcomes. And they do not understand that, that this height, when we research, that you may consider that as an academic, you receive constantly um, the message that you're a good academic student, you're good working, but you're not brilliant enough, you're not courageous enough, or maybe the environment is not friendly enough with you. So sometimes it's not clear what the problem is. The problem is not clearly defined. For example, they already work in collaboration. They, you have mixed groups, you do have that approach. But oftentimes, if you do not intervene, you will realize while they are in the lab or at the workshop, the boys are doing things. They are touching things with their hands, which is crucial with STEM. And they are reading the instructions, or they are talking to each other, or they are making notes. And that's a problem of the division of labor. It's not that the school increases that or not. The school is just a mirror image of what happens everywhere. When we think about professions, we do not have the sensitivity to make visible people of all ages because there are also generational issues, there are cultural issues, different languages in all professions. And sometimes we do not do it, not only with STEM, but also the non-STEM ones. We do not call and say, okay, if the fire work, if the fire works um, institute should come, please bring a man and a woman, or bring me a fat person and a person who is in shape, who is fit, because a student should see that diversity is contributes to all professions, and diversity is goes beyond gender, and uh, we, the greatest diversity we understand less because it's a majority, and, and, and it's surprising. But there are other types of diversity. So I believe these are things. If we understand truly what the problem is, especially the case of STEAM, well, we have we need more diverse diversities in, in, in engineering and in chemistry. In other areas, they do not need that. Maybe exactly the opposite. In education, and Corral knows this. I was a professor at the old uh, school. 95% of my students are women. And that's a problem too. Why is it that children's teachers are women? What are we communicating here? 95% are women. And how, in this case, they reproduce the role of okay, three women who are children's teachers working with boys and girls. And there is a problem with the projector. And we call, you know, the janitor, who is the only man at school. So this is very much in the culture. The school is not a problem. Schools are doing many, many things that make things visible and that value things, but it should be part of the solution. It should be part of the solution. Yeah, I loved this. Something Jorge Bagensberg always used to say. Reality is not guilty for our curricula. And when 
the uh, good things happening, they happen at the cafeteria. Because as soon as this is introduced in the classroom, it stops. Well, because you are a, an observer, an external observer, and you notice this change of paradigm. If not, you are not able to see an innovation that could have a big effect. I like this. STEAM tries to intertwine, to relate the real world with the school. Corral. I fully agree. It is clear. Here, there is an element that oftentimes, as Digna has said, girls, because of their need to do things better in order to compensate for their handicap, they try to do things very well. They are unable to accept a mistake. They are unable to do a prototyping, to read the instructions. They are absolutely academic and they follow the rules. And clearly, the school is not the problem. But the solution is in our hands. And the necessary change that there should be in the role of teachers to compensate for this, because this is a hurdle that needs an explicit will to be overcome. We have said so, for example. Girls, in general, are worse when it comes to programming, because when they make a mistake, they they, 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 they they get really nervous. They believe that copying is a, a, a lack of ethics. And whereas male students are able to do all of it. And the only thing we can do as teachers is to compensate for this difference, for this working style, having girls working on this. Especially here, the school has a crucial role to play, the social role. There should be the social role to try and understand that the way to learn implies on learning, to work with mistakes, that we're not looking for the know-it-all, but we're looking for the learn-it-all. And in this way, you will be able to change things. But the school has a crucial role to play in this field. In general, you may believe it's different, but then you are surprised how backwards we are from that point of view. Well, because boys and girls do not take it, they do not pretend. The school is seen better because they do not fake it. Corral, now that you have just said that, I've made a note of this, I've even tweeted it because I loved how much emphasis has been given around the role played by mistakes. The most gender-biased index, and there are many different types of indexes, interests, etc. the most gender-biased one is fear of making a mistake. Boys and girls, girls in the world, not in Catalonia, but also in Somalia, girls of the world, and that is structural. It comes from a patriarchal society. Girls are much more afraid of making mistakes at the age of 16 or at the age of six than others, regardless of their socioeconomic status, and their, in the, uh, their family situation, etc. It's incredible. Well, but this is determined because they need to demonstrate that they're better, that they're perfect. There are two things here. We have really analyzed this in depth. I'm going to say something else. So far, I have said things as an expert between inverted commas and things I've read. And I'm going to say something that I've not read and that is not the outcome of my research. It's something that has made me think for a long, long time. And I believe it is related. I think it's something we need to research further on. Girls stop playing very early. And then you have social games. They substitute the time and the role playing with social roles. And you learn by playing. When you play, you can make a mistake and nothing happens. Somebody who plays video games knows exactly how you perform. 
it, I mean, you, whether you're not worried about passing or not, if you invest many hours at a video game, you will be very successful with it. And if you do not have that experience and you believe that you start playing, you fail, I'm not good at this, I do not like it, I'm going to do something else. It is something that I've seen very much at kindergarten and with my three children. Sometimes when I talk about gender and science to parents, because I love doing this type of presentations, when they ask us, give me a piece of advice, I would say, encourage your girls to play, to getting dirty and to running risks and to failing and to, and to, and to, and to fight, nothing happens. That's how mammals and people learn now, today you may be doing badly, but no problem because tomorrow you'll do it better. And game is safe. Nobody feels threatened when you're playing. Social games are about judging, and that's a problem. You girls get into social games very early, and here judgment is crucial because social games are the realm of judging. Who are you on? Whose side are you? Are you my enemy? Are you not my enemy? Are you dominating? Are you commanding or not? It's terrible. Well, clearly, we, we have very little contact with students, but we do see what you're saying is well reflected. When they come here or when they carry out activities with us, we are well aware that we are the snapshot, the picture that we have, because we do not know how many images of, of scientists they will have throughout their lives. And we try to do it as best as possible in order to give them the most diverse image, as, as, as diverse as possible. And you're, given that in our institute, we live out of scientific creativity, we work internally because of all of this problem of diversity, of the very little diversity between young people implies a lack of diversity then in the labor market. And of course, I would do experimental quantum physics. And when I came to doing it, I was the only girl. I was the only woman. I have to say that at the end, we were 50-50 in the field of experimental quantum physics. And like so many other, in so many other things, we try to increase the ratio. And we're very much in touch with different scientists. And that helps us to understand better and it helps our institute to be more diverse so that the activities we carry out reflect that diversity. Oh, spectacular, wonderful. Well, at least we do try. There's something else that Coral mentioned, technology. Technology is ubiquitous, it's everywhere. We have it in our pockets, in our backpacks, in our homes. I mean, it can, it, 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 you know, in the, in the past, a supercomputer or a computer would actually occupy a whole flat in Barcelona. And of course, when you have this type of technology and thinking about what has been just said, I mean, girls with instructions, uh, they are afraid of making mistakes. And with mistakes, great scientific discoveries have been made. Well. You know, these smells, there are too many boys here. I don't want to be there. And this is a question it's, that's in my mind constantly. You know, technology is absolutely ubiquitous. It's totally present in our lives. And at school, it's just a layer. It is just a tool. Coral, would you like to say something? Now that you have a space to speak up, go ahead. Yes, in general, the first transition that has that schools have to go through is to actually transform computer science rooms into prototyping rooms but here there is something else beforehand 
it was mentioned that we need to link steam with 3d printers when in fact it's something that very far i've been a biology teacher and i was used to working with micro microscopes from a very early age whereas magnifying glasses binocular magnifying glasses are a very different thing for example laser cutters which are relatively expensive and hard to get by a school well here there is an enormous wealth to build up things and it's a great resource will we say it's not the technology lab it's not the computer science room it is both when we design structures for example steam must be linked to the projects. We must see that a project with a model, with something that has a sensor, all of the things that include different elements that are interrelated, that's real life. Because in a real life, technology is absolutely ubiquitous and immersive and i think this is one of the quantum leaps we have to do one of the great mistakes made by the stem movement is careful when we get excited those of us who get excited because now stem is fashionable at some point it will become unfashionable and that concerns me because now we all talk about steam and it may fall into oblivion the point would be to understand it as part, an inherent part of culture, an inherent part of educational culture that can never be left out. In the same way that we tend to fall into the mistake of, of overemphasizing steam as if it were a warfare with the other culture, the other thing, I think the T was a, prob a problem. It should be called SEM or SIM as a beginning because the T worries me. There is, we understand, a certain type of tea. It does if analog technologies did not exist. And they also play a significant role. Something else that's quite important is that what we need to claim is engineering. Engineering should also be introduced at school. This way of facing problems by creating solutions, creating solutions like prototyping, optimizing, and materializing. And that implies educating creativity as well, exactly to educate creativity is to educate people who are able to produce different solutions. And when people say, well, we need a project with the A's. No, engineering has creativity and science too. It's fine with to do it with the A's to get other forms that are also very interesting. And it's a beautiful perspective, but it's not the only one. I believe it was a mistake to introduce this T because some people understand the T like ICT, and as if it were a digital technology 2.0, you know, going beyond the use of word and the social media to program and to be a programmer and to be a maker. And it's not about that. It's something else what we want. What we want is to have a way of bringing the, the problems of the world and the challenges of the world. And technology is just another tool like mathematics or like any other tool that we can find. And it's the most important tool like the A and the others. And that's why I say, okay, we have to use the personal synergies and the right technologies because we tend to forget that the best technology we have is how our pers the next person sees it. That will not solve it, uh, solved by a machine. And it's not minor not to have a machine. When you have a tool, you think differently. That's why, you know, the, the tool gives a lot of value and we need to value it for its worth, but it also has a limitation. And I believe it's crucial that when you only have a hammer, all problems look at, like a nail. If you only have a hammer, all problems look like a nail. So you 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 you, you are limited. You know, a technology professor. Well, you're a, you, you tell the person you're an engineering professor, but you tell me something I could do. What's the goal? I ask the person. Each student is a, a goal 
is a girl in itself? Or what do you want to do with, the, with that student? I want them to realize that engineering can be useful to change the world, to do community work, and then, or, or whatever. Think the strategy well. And when at the end of the day, they realize some will program it and others will not program it. And they will design how the product should be. But we need that in this, in, in this team, our developers, product designers. I mean, you need to realize that not, not everybody should do the same. And the one that dominates is not the technology that you will use, but the guiding light should be which technology do you have and what do you want them to learn? How to think. The, the goal is to uh, teach them how to think and how to face a problem. I think that at the end of the day, it's the same problem that we can find in other matters with a different perspective. What you want is that the student is able to communicate well, that he, can, he or she can do a good PowerPoint and anecdote. You want people to communicate well. Or in the case of humanities, it's the same thing that they know the historical, the historical thread. The point is that they know how to explain it well. At the end of the day, when a, with a strict STEAM vision, you're being overly academic. What I mean is that this is also very important to be borne in mind. I fully agree with both of you. You know, as a person who afterwards receives these students, it is not all ICT. We need to develop this part of annual construction. Things from the past, you know, Lego. But when I am at the lab, at the quantum optics lab, I am constantly working with nails and with balls, even though it's about individual photons. But at the end of the day, this is my my, my work table. It's filled with, with balls and nails. And okay, you say, okay, you, you take, you know, you take the, 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 the wrench and work with it. This is so true. At the lab, we have a very wide array of, of elements to work with, enormous machines. And then, and I say, this is my favorite space because this is what can fix all of the other machines. You know, enormous churro making machines that include so many things. I mean, to think about these tools, which are the traditional tools of our granddad, you know, the grand, our granddads were the traditional makers. Well, Nuria Salad, my grandmother was a maker. This is a type of figure or profile we have lost. I believe that in general, anything related to things that historically women have done, they have tended up to be produced. I mean, the kitchen has become important when big male chefs have come. Daily cooking is not considered. Mathematical patterns that allow us to do millions of things. You know, people tend to, to disparage what is feminine, what is traditionally associated to women. This is neither masculine nor feminine. It's neither male nor female. Because everybody should take care of him or herself and the planet. And everybody should have enough knowledge and creativity to be able to face the challenges that are coming. Our children will be facing a world that's much more complex, much more uncertain than the one we're going through. And it's not going to be necessarily better. Therefore, to be focused on what's important, caring for others, caring for the planet, and being assertive, perseverant, and secure is much more important because this is the world that's coming. I believe that increasingly, we need values. It's so, it's so easy to lose those values. Values are essential. And here, STEAM have a great, great value. 
And at the same time, they should show that, well, technology is not at the center of the world. It's not going to be the solution for everything. I mean, it's like a celebration of complexity because compartmentalizing things, you may call it STEAM, STEM or as you wish. We're talking about mixing disciplines. Let's use all of the knowledge that's available to us in the world because we have such big problems. And I love the formula used by Jorge Magisbert. He said, complexity plus anticipation is equal to uncertainty plus action. It is so simple, but I believe this is the great lack of our way of acting, being reductionist and not celebrating complexity. And so sad because I could keep on talking to you for hours on end, but time is up. I'd like to hear one last sentence from you as a way of wrapping up and, 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 and saying goodbye. Well, I think it has been a very interesting session. I have enjoyed very much listening to all of your experiences and points of view. The importance of science funding and the criteria that should be used has been very interesting to me. We need to learn how to learn, and we should apply this to us, to recreate ourselves. We need to be recreated. I hope the audience, too, has enjoyed it. Excellent. Wonderful. So thank you very much indeed to all of you. Digna, Federica, Corral, and Lavinia, who has unfortunately had to leave early. And the only thing I wanted to say is that, well, I'd like to thank you. And I'd like to thank the interpreters, the technical team. And I'd like to thank the audience for, re for giving support to these spaces for discussion. And now I'm going to give the witness to Laia Sanchez from CityLab for this, for the next session, Hacking Education and Hacking the Educational Code. Thank you very much indeed and have a great afternoon.